Nice sign is an arm. <laughs> okay. That must be oh. the new one. Oh. <laughs> like a shot dog. The it, starts, it starts blinking, you know. Oh, that. so this is it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently the on air sign doesn't work, so the, if the lights are lit up red in the. So they got creative. Okay. First I've heard of it. <clears throat> I'd like to call together the meeting of the March uh, 19th, 2018 uh, City of Monona Finance and Personnel Committee. Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderwood. Here. Alderwood was. Here. Mayor O'Connor. Here. He was. Is that okay? <laughs> Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the March 5th meeting? So moved. Second. Any comments, changes? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, I don't think there are any appearances tonight. There's no unfinished business. Uh, item 6A under new business, consideration of resolution 18 3 2252, authorizing the issuance and sale of $2.8 million in general obligation promissory note, series 2018A. Um. For Mr. Miller um, gets up. Jeff is not available, so they, um, Jeff is going to. Er, I'm sorry, I forgot your first name. Jim. Is it Jeff I, I, I'm Jim Miller from Hutchinson, okay. Shock okay. Early and Company. Thank I'm you. a partner of Jeff's, and I've basically worked with Jeff for a long, long time. So, <laughs> that being said, um, obviously, since Jeff has last been here, the structure of the financing um, was laid out. Uh, since that time that uh, you've gone through the rating process again, maintain your, your uh, AA plus rating that you've had for some time. Uh, in terms of the marketing of the debt issue, um, the interest rates, the actual coupons range between three and 4%. Um, the way the sale ended up, the uh, all in interest cost of the financing, it's, it's roughly a 10 year financing, came in at, uh, 2.99 percent that's taking all costs into consideration so that's the effective borrowing <coughs> borrowing rate for the for the city so other than that I'd have to answer any questions you might have um, yeah just before he kind of summarize this before he has questions so basically this is 2.8 um, just so I don't know if you're so updating you kind of Mary from last time we originally wanted 2.7 million dollars uh, we had an extra Hundred thousand in there, um, in case we'll, depending on what we do with the boat launch. So we had them um, go two point eight. If we don't use it for the boat launch coming up, we have another borrowing coming up here in the near future for the TIF. We can use that hundred thousand dollars and just reduce that borrowing, which would be looks like it's probably going to be around August. We'll be coming back for the TIF nine financing. So that was kind of the issue wise from and two point seven to two point eight and. We also use some fund balance was reduced. Some of these other areas for water and sewer are reduced with fund balance sales. When I say fund balance, it's basically unspent proceeds from the year before for that for capital not. borrowing. Yeah. Okay. I mean I, that's a good point. I, I you know I think the sooner you can get things locked in place, in these in these days, the better. Obviously, the direction of interest rates has been up. If you look at historically relative rates to the last five, six years, I mean, we've been in the low twos. Uh, here we're in the high twos. And a lot of that has to do with the direction of the economy in addition to uh, reforming the tax law. So with marginal rates coming down both for corporations as well as for individuals, um, that had an impact as well. So, okay. But all in all, to, to lock in a 10-year financing at 299 I think is a pretty, pretty, pretty uh, a nice deal to have. Jeff also then also put together uh, comps, how you ra uh, uh, ended up relative to a couple other deals that have been the, in, the, in the market in the last week, town of Florence and uh, on Alaska. And you can see your, your rates are right in line. 
uh, with those two deals. Um, this deal, the, the only other difference um, moving forward into 2018 with the change in tax law, um, municip municipalities can't do advance refundings anymore. I'm sure Jeff has done quite a number of those for you. Um, you've got to actually wait till the call date to refinance. Um, in this case, what we did, or what Jeff did, was shorten the call um, with a seven-year call as opposed to an eight. So it uh, does give you a little more flexibility in that regard. Okay, so that was part of the new tax? Right. Well, oh. right. well that can make a big difference for us, couldn't it? It does. Well, Over we, time. we haven't done a lot of advance refunding because our rates have been so low. Yeah, so we've low. been basically status quo for interest rates up until just the last, last six months, yeah. ever since 2008, 2009. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know if you can explain this too, just because it affects the tax law. We actually lost banks in the, in the new tax law, is that correct how that works? Well, you did because, you know, the, with bank qualified issues, with the tax rates the way they were, there was a real advantage for banks to purchase municipals because uh, their marginal rates were f relatively high, so getting that added tax break made it even more favorable. Obviously, with the reduction in corporate rates, it's had an impact. So, so it's still working its way out into the market. It's so are you saying there's fewer banks interested well, in Well, the banks, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> That's correct. Okay. Where in the past, you know, you'd have a, a smaller financing relatively short. They'd have a real interest in it. I'm not saying they have no interest, but they have a less interest. So the buyer base of these issues is a little different. That's for all government geo debt. Correct. Okay. Any just, Alderwood? Just for historical context, do you could you do you know what the rate would was say ten years ago or fifteen, whatever? Well, I mean it, since eight in oh eight, if you so, were to do a ten year ten years ago. Like before oh eight. Before before eight before, before, yeah. before oh eight you would have been quite a bit higher. Obviously rates really went down you probably would have been borrowing 10 years for three and a half, four percent. So you're still doing relatively well. Right. Good. And that's about right. But we have our borrowings from those years. But well, those have all been paid off or refinanced. Right. Okay. Anything else? Mm -hmm. All in favor? There was we didn't no have motion. A motion. I know. Any? Oh, that's right. Is there a motion? I'm sorry. I'll move approval. Second. Any further questions? And there should be a roll call for this one. Okay. Uh, then will the clerk please call the roll? Alder Wood? Aye. Alder Holquist? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Item 6B, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Consideration of resolution 18 3 2253, a resolution to allow beer sales by parks and recreation staff during special events in city parks. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval. Second. Mr. Anderson. Good evening. Um, this is a continuation of some events that we were able to sell beer last year in 2017 at concerts in the park and our food cart cinema. Um, we are proposing that we do those same events again and add a few new events that were. The light went off. I thought maybe we were no longer being broadcast, but apparently it's back on. Sorry. Back on the World Wide <laughs> yeah. Web. Um, so we've got a few new events this year that we're looking at doing, including a movie night at our newly refinished Bridge Road Park. Um, we are going to try to introduce a traveling beer garden at Schluter Park two nights in July, where we would go back to back with some acoustic music and um, backyard games. And then at our fall festival, our Friday night, we would be looking at doing a movie night this year and selling beer again. Um, these dates were recommended unanimously by the License Review Committee and the Park and Rec Board on March 13th. Um, and we're hoping to get approval tonight and then we would issue an RFP for sponsorship from a um, preferably one um, craft brew or beer vendor that we would work with the, within the laws to be able to get discounted beer to sell. Is this just for 2018 at Correct. this point? Correct. Yeah, just for 2018. And how does a traveling beer garden work? So this would be like the start of what we would potentially be looking at doing long range. So, for example, Milwaukee County Parks is a vehicle where they might spend a week at a time at certain parks. Okay. And so if this is successful, we could see it 
you know, two nights at Schluter, two nights at Maywood, you know, on weekends down the road in the future. But I want to see what with these increased kind of dates, if it's a popular thing to do. We are starting a, a couple new initiatives this year. One, uh, meet me at the meet us at the park, in which we'll have our recreation staff travel around to some of our neighborhood parks, especially those that have been redone, have some games and activities, and really just a chance for neighbors to kind of meet <coughs> each other. And then two, we're going to be running community fitness nights, where we're going to have some of our existing exercise instructors run free programs in the park. So we're looking to kind of expand. Um, our offerings and kind of our opportunities for people to get out into the parks and then this kind of traveling beer garden may end up being tied into some of those other activities okay anyone else one, wood? Yeah, <clears throat> one comment uh, it says in the last line of the uh, resolve clause that uh, the, it be exempted from the fencing requirements that uh, which we did last year, and uh, again, the license review committee didn't have any problem with that, and I think it's worked well. So, maybe reevaluating the, the across the board fencing requirements for other applicants, probably not the festival committee, but um, a, a lot of the other events. Okay. Anyone else? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank motion you. passes thank you item 6c consideration of resolution 18-3-2244 approval of contract with general engineering company for building inspection services uh, city administrator little um, at city council we will have uh, general engineering um, present to answer some questions but first I'll give kind of an overview of um, where we ended up with on our final negotiations of the contract and then Mark maybe you can help me go through the the spreadsheet that that you um, refined a little bit further so um, general engineering is um, a firm they have multiple inspectors in multiple cities um, a lot of cities around like Windsor Wanakee um, use this service um, I've used them in past communities and have been satisfied with their services uh, their flat rate is seventy dollars uh, per hour plus mileage at the IRS rate and um, right now we're paying about $45 per hour for our current inspector um, originally they wanted to um, do a set mileage rate I believe it was 65 cents per hour but um, we were able to compromise and um, get them to agree to the IRS rate we would keep our current um, property maintenance inspector and our uh, current commercial electrical inspector. Um, it's just more economical to do that, but we do have the option to pick up those services from General Engineering Company later if we need to. Um, and I guess just looking at um, the rates overall, it seems like especially in these couple of years where we're gonna have some higher building activity, we'll do better with the flat rate than um, like a permanent permit revenue uh, split rate um, that was their actual original proposal um, that they gave to us um, the regular inspector will be uh, local which will help save on some of that mileage and commuting time but there might be some occasions where um, he'll need to have a, a backup inspector um, or somebody maybe at a higher level if we're dealing with a difficult case and that they would have to come down um, from Portage. But like I said, I think that was probably the best compromise um, on the mileage that, that we could possibly get. Um, they do guarantee some minimum office hours. Um, we can have more hours, obviously, if we do wish the budget for them, but at least they would be here a minimum of three days a week and they would take their calls directly. So um, on our website, if you wanted to uh, get some service, you would call GEC directly. You wouldn't have to necessarily go through our um, front office staff. So even if they're not on site, um, you know, they'd be responsive typically out in the field. Um, and I think that's pretty much the summary of the contract. And um, we can take a look at the spreadsheets that we refined a little bit um, from the last time. So I, <coughs> I did the spreadsheets 
A um, couple things here. Um, so this spreadsheet is just taken electric, electric, electric salaries and then FICA for that salaries, which is um, the commercial person. And inspection sal services, what we've been paying McFarland, and then I separated code enforcement salaries. So basically this first one is how much, what would be on the revenues or the, the cost um, if uh, we just to cover the building inspector costs, not in, not including the code enforcement services. Um, so I have it with the 2018 budget, what I estimated 2018 actual will be in the projected 2019 budget, the last three columns. Um, so we budgeted $79,000 in revenue, um, but we're estimated to be about 250000 And this is uh, based on if they, Phase one, which will be starting here fairly soon, and then phase three, which would be the hotel, um, based on their square, square footage, um, that information, and, and then looking at <coughs> what we budgeted. Uh, we're basically coming in about 250000 And why is this budget number different than last year's? Um, we weren't assuming that those projects would happen this year uh, because of some delays in the development agreements, and we didn't realize phase three they would have so quick. Um, so that's kind of why that budget number is like that. So we're budgeting about 250,000 we'll probably receive this year in revenue. Um, we're in, during the current contract, if we use McFarland, we would have netted 187,250, but it's no longer um, happening as of March 31st. Um, so the cost recovery under the different scenarios, um, at 16 hours a week under that second, second to last column, if we would do the 80-20 sh share split that has been talked about earlier, um, we only keep $50,000 um, worth of revenues. Um, if they work 16 hours a week, um, we would net about 180,000. Um, and if you go down to the next section too, it's, that's supposed to be at 20 hours per week. So it's, again, 80, 20 would be uh, 50,000 and then 20 hours a week, we'd net 165,000 uh, based on the current, what the current contract would be if we go with the uh, per hour rate. Um, and then I have a projected 2019, uh, same base situation. I just kind of left the budget numbers the same because basically when you pull a permit, they're gonna pull all of them in the current year, they pull them ahead of time. So unless phase two is moved up three more years, we won't have that big uh, income coming in. So I kind of put it back to where the normal would be, which is 15, 16, 17, kind of right in that area. Um, in the same situation, you see 80, 20, it'd be 15,000, 16 hours a week, 9,000. And then 20 hours a week, a negative amount. So, um, so it does it does make a huge difference how we do this? Um, big projects, you, uh, we like the per hour. You, you definitely net more money. Uh, smaller smaller dollars. Um, it's really more 80 20 kind of looking at that we are looking at right now in big projects. So, um, something to think about. Um, and I did on the next page. I just did it with the code enforcement. Same exact. Thing. We just added the cold enforcement in there because when we added the cold enforcement services back, I think it was uh, four, three, four years ago when we first started it. The theory was that our permits would kind of cover that, so we wouldn't need it, um, budget extra money. So I just threw it in there. What would that look like? And you can see the estimated 18 and 19 based on the same situ same scenarios. What that look like in the last, the second to last columns. Um, with that. So. There will be some increase to the budgets in 19 or 20 when we actually, 19 might not happen, but depending when they, you know, phase two might happen next year or when it happens. So that could make a difference. So that's the biggest thing. I just want to hit on one thing, if the number's not included in here, um, there's, in the contract, there is, a, there is a part in there that says um, the time spent um, commuting and the mileage. So if they come from Portage, they come so many hours you know, every day, if we don't have a local inspector, I wasn't here Thursday and Friday, so I don't know how that worked out. Um, if they come five days a week um, and they come every day from Portage, you need to subtract about forty thousand off there uh, that net income number. So <coughs> I think we're trying to figure that out what the best deal would be, but there would be a, a charge because that's down uh, forty five minutes and then back up another mm -hmm. forty five minutes. So you're talking an hour and a half round round trip, trip times five, you know, and times, you know, 52 weeks, and then with the mileage, that's, you know, another, I can't remember the exact dollar amount, I guess you're around the years, but, you know, $12,000 worth of mileage, if they come five days a week, um, 
So that is something I did include it in the spreadsheets. I just want you to be aware of that number, um, just so you're aware of it. Although I have to add, right now we're functioning on four days a week and right, and, and just fine, and and we're um, we are told that we'll get a local inspector. So so they have confirmed that. I they, know they did said that early that. on, yes. but mm -hmm. okay. and and we can ask them again when they come. Okay, we so definitely need to ask them that because that makes a big difference. Yep, it does. Um, could you also confirm my understanding is if we wanted to switch to the 80-20 in, in a coming year, we could. I think our concern right now was that we didn't have anybody lined up. We've been looking at these options, um, but we're starting the riverfront like in a week. Mm -hmm. So we really need to get somebody under contract. And we do have more than enough money in permits to cover it this year. So I think we definitely need to take a look at it next year um, to see if we want to switch it to 80 20, or we may even want to go to some other kind of inspection service. You know, at that point, we may find somebody who's willing to share <clears throat> another community like we have with McFarland up to now. There's been some interest from in other communities, but they're not ready right now. So I see this at least as a stopgap measure. Um, and Correct. who knows, maybe we'll end up keeping them for a long time, I don't know, but. Any questions, any other questions? No? Um, I'll do yeah, it. I do. I, um, let's see, I'm trying to find it in the last. So, um, are we gonna be approved voting on this tonight at council then? I think we are, yes, and he will be here. A representative from the company will be here from the list. council also. So my understanding is the schedule is um, we wouldn't have been able to get our regular inspector um, until the first week of April, but um, the timing is such that now we have all the um, riverfront permits on the on the desk right now. Um, you know, worst case scenario, um, our current inspector can certainly still issue those permits. Um, <coughs> But it would have been nice to, you know, continue, you know, start and continue with the new inspector. But they should be able to um, bring somebody in next week to start with that transition a little bit early. So, um, so it makes it even more important that we pass it tonight, if yeah, possible. Yeah. So, and they weren't able to be here at the last meeting. So, so um, Marty is leaving as of April one. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk um, tomorrow about the specifics on the transition. So. Um, I'll get a, a hold of them again and we'll kind of co start co that coordination process. But he is scheduled to leave at the end of March, right, Marty? Yes, yes. Because we should get the new permanent inspector the first week in April. Okay. Um, yeah, I, just, I mean, more of a comment. I still have a problem with paying, us paying to, for somebody to drive and the time and, and mileage from Portage, so I guess, and I, you know, when they're here, can talk talk about that and say, you know, if long term, that's not going to work. Um, and you know, ho hopefully, if they they will get somebody local, and if they, but that person also, I mean, they have to be um, capable, mm -hmm. not just you know somebody, some guy who has a certification to do inspections. My understanding is it's not that hard to get this, that certification. Um, so, by them, to, to me, by them requiring us to pay that that travel cost, um, it leaves me completely open to looking at some doing it, contracting with somebody else, or hire, doing it in house, either next year or the year after, or whenever. That this is not a long term relationship at this point. I think there's a 90-day, 60-day termination clause. 60, uh, I think, or is that? Termination, uh, 60 days. So it's on page yeah. 2, section, article 3.2. So. So, yeah, I agree. We need to keep an eye on it, and at mm -hmm. least it should get us through this crunch time, hopefully. Right, yeah. So. Anyone else? Alder Holmquist? My concern was the, the when someone promises something outside the contract, it's always mm -hmm. a key item. Mm -hmm. So the idea of, well, they promise that we're going to get a local inspector. Right. Either it's in the contract or it's it not. It is not. In, yeah, and that's exactly right. There's no guarantee 
in the contract that it would be a local person. So, but um, you know, in talking with our uh, attorney, we we felt we could we pushed it about as as far as they'd be willing to to go, and they did reduce their mileage rate. So. At least we got a little bit of a victory the, there. I'm sorry. What were they asking for mileage? I believe it was 65 cents. And it's 50, 55 53 or and a half. Or yeah. yeah. So now it's yeah. back at the IRS a rate, so it's lower. That's <coughs> yeah. what I find with that. And given the termination kind of parameters, it's in our interest. And if things aren't going well, I want to renegotiate to either have them put in a local inspector, which means a mile radius and whatever, or we cap off the salary time and pay the mileage or lump it all together but then adjust the, the hourly rate so. and we'll keep you know the ears open about you know if there's another commun community willing to partner possibly cottage Grove, but they're just not ready today to do it so anything else is there a motion to approve mm -hmm. or would you like yeah. to just refer it to the council I'll move to approve I'll second any further comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Items uh, 6D, consideration of resolution 18-3-2251, approval to con contract with Maggie B. Communications for Municipal Communications Consulting Services. Is there a motion to approve this? We have approval. Second. Uh, City Administrator Little? Uh, so this is uh, a budget item that we had for uh, 2018 and we sent out an RFP and we got back five responses. Um, we're recommending going with Maggie B for the assessment and branding work. Um, she's actually a local consultant. She was the second lowest bid. Uh, the lowest bid was actually um, Greenleaf Media who does some work for us with the transit, but we actually had some concerns on their level of responsiveness. So that's why um, this contractor was more um, attractive to us. Um, we've adjusted the scope a little bit um, to meet our budget target of 12,000. Um, so this will be for just um, branding and uh, the commun communications needs assessment. And we figure we can um, substitute some in-house and intern help, um, for example, to, to uh, work on the survey. So that kind of help keep the cost a little bit lower. And Exhibit B lays out um, the details of um, what she would be doing for us in this contract. Is that the expected deliverables piece? I see something labeled Exhibit yes, A, but uh, I, exhibit I don't B. see a B. Uh, <coughs> maybe I'm dismissing it. Yep, it's page 38 on your electronic copy. Okay, I guess it just doesn't say B. Um, and then Leah did send out a separate fiscal note. Did you to see that? Yeah. Yeah, correct okay. one, yep. So any questions? Yeah, I have one. Alderwood? So you, you think you indicated the scope of the work had been adjusted. So how, how was it adjusted? For, I assume that we have the Exhibit A is our request for proposals so it's been and identifies the scope there how has it been changed from that I would say some of the hours um, have been adjusted devoted to certain tasks um, some of them were a little bit lowered and um, I would say the the one where we really um, took out some of the hours was um, for this the survey under branding because like I said, it, we thought that we could probably distribute that um, ourselves and, and compile that um, in-house with in-house labor and just have her be a, a, an advisor on, on that part of the project. I think also, um, is it phase B or phase two? Um, create a tourism needs assessment. That really wasn't something that was intended to be done when we passed this back in November. Mm. and. That is not going to, I think we mainly <clears throat> put that in there to get an 
estimate of what that might cost. Is that right, April? So yeah, that will so be we're a not future. Doing that yeah, that will be a, a future um, phase, and um, you know we <coughs> could choose to do that with this contractor. We could choose to um, look at one of the other proposals we got, or or frankly, we could start over. So, um, but we'll we'll look at that <coughs> at a at a bit of a later date, and um, then I think we'll have a better feel um, for how we work with this contractor anyway and our level of satisfaction. So. And that would require different funding also. Yes, so. exactly. So <coughs> it's separate anyway because of the funding source. <coughs> Any further questions? There would? Nope. Uh, I think we have a motion. Is that yes, correct? Do, do you need a roll call for this, Joan? Uh, I don't is it over? Isn't it anything over 500? Didn't you tell That's me? That's what it says. Yeah, we got to look at that. Me. So, um, sure, a roll call would not. Okay. How do we not Joel? catch that on the recodification? Hmm. Call a roll. Call the roll, please. Alder Holmquist. Aye. Alder Wood. Aye. Motion passes. All right. The final item is acceptance of general fund accounts payable checks dated March 2nd through the 15th of 2018. Documentation of invoices paid is available in the city clerk's office. Mr. Hautucker. Yeah. Um, I don't have a lot of things in here. A lot of this is normal everyday business stuff, but uh, just a couple of things on page two um, for me is uh, CTW uh, Corporation is the well number three repairs. Um, that's part of a capital item. Uh, on the next page, page three, agenda communication. Again, uh, radio equipment, another capital item in the 2018 budget. Um, Uh, page 13, uh, just kill Gus, uh, mechanic. Mechanical, there is a re boiler repair that was needed over at the uh, uh, communi uh, community center. Um, and the boiler repairs add up. Uh, the next page, page 14, uh, mj &E, this is our one of our winter bills. Um, and underneath that, uh, Monona Bank, um, that is again our credit card. It's actually down for the month. It's a light month. Yeah, underneath that, underneath page 15, Monona East Side Business Alliance. Here's our tourism visitors guide that we paid. Uh, page 17, um, uh, Vanderwall. I just want to hit on the you know, riverfront. The plaza design is ongoing. I think I have a question on that page also. Okay. Washburn Machinery, $6,500 for laundry equipment? Yep, that's, that was a... Uh, Thing for the fire department, we had budgeted in our capital borrowing or 2000. It's actually carried over 2017. They ordered at the end of the year to replace their uh, laundry equipment because it's not just like a regular um, washer and dryer because of all their larger equipment that's needed. Uh, they had some larger, um, you know, they're like doing their coats, whatever that more heavy duty, new heavy duty them. stuff. Okay, so that was a planned uh, purchase in our capital okay. budget, and that's all I have. Uh, is there a motion to approve or accept the bills? I'll move to accept the uh, checks payable, accounts payable. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? Yep. Nope. All in favor of accepting the bill say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned.